Okay, here's a new article in about Egypt and how they're currently using AI technology to recreate the facial structure of ancient pharaohs and mummies from the past. Um, they've utilized this technology in a few different ways already at this point, but decided to start going with it at these. And their first attempts pretty much are some of the best kept mummies because it should work better on that and supposedly through the database that that develops it'll make it where it's easier to do it on other ones this is Seti the first and a very famous pharaoh for what he did but uh, and we'll get into that also in the subject here we're going to go into a two-parter here on this but Seti is sometimes outshadowed by his father or his son known as Ramses the Great and uh also, Seti are known to have been Seth worshippers, or Set worshippers, and that's where they get the name Beloved of Set. He's known to have been a redhead with blue eyes, corresponding to Typhon, and the ancient tales that the Greeks give of him, and their brother Egyptus, and how that all worked out, and I did videos about that right before Christmas. But uh, we have recently also did one on Thuya and Yuya, which are the great-grandparents of King Tut, and showed you them and their mummies and leading all the way in and if I've got time I'll even show you a picture of them but let's go ahead and get into this because what they're basically doing is it airbrushes away into something natural and I believe that they find it easier to do it with black and white photographs or at least that's what he's working off of because they still have this mummy said he they have him to this day and uh, it's one of the better preserved mummies Although you can see right over in here, if it's not too bright. Let me see if I can dim that. Is that dim? Wow, no, it doesn't really dim. You can see right there, there's just all this kind of goop and shellac that they're putting all over him. And uh, so what they basically did was they turned into beef jerky by putting him in that natron. And it, you know, makes him get dark and stuff like beef jerky. And then they take in shellac over him. I just recently did a video where it explains that they shellacked him over with some things that it looks like derived bitumen, so like a crude oil type tar that they're using, and it's mixed with pine sap, conifer sap, and it's one of the two types of conifers that are found up in Europe. So whenever they're doing this, they're having to do all this trade massively for it. And we knew at the time, of course, that they have to import cedars and trees and things like this but they're actually importing in pine sap and using pine sap along with that bitumen and fragrances and other things and shellacking the bodies with that whenever they do it. And in fact, whenever they put the second casket in there, in some, and especially around this time and later, they end up covering it with this tar and goop, kind of sealing it in that situation in that bitumen. It's kind of an odd thing, but it's got that tree sap too from it and that definitely shows you a connection. So let's look at this real quick. AI technology used to recreate the face of biblical pharaohs. Technology is changing almost every aspect of our lives. It is also transforming how we understand and relate to our past and heritages. A new initiative, My Colorful Past, is using facial recognition technology to reconstruct the faces of people from history. This project has just reconstructed the face of one of the greatest of all pharaohs, Seti one who played an important part in the story of Moses or it's in the biblical story and we'll get into that colorizing historic images Matt Lowry who lives in Ireland has been fascinated by technology all of his life and he was previously involved in the colorization of old photographs and his work attracted the attention of National Geographic and others this led him to establish my colorful past which colorizes historic photographs, but he felt that he could do more to make them even more lifelike. Matt told Ancient Origins in an exclusive interview, I saw room for a change of approach and decided to focus on creating more accurate methods to improve results. It took him five years of hard work to develop the technology, but he has eventually was able to realistically colorize old photographs and enhance them, bringing figures from the 19th century, such as the outlaw Jesse James, back to life. However, he felt restricted in what he could achieve with photographs. 
Moreover, he was aware of the rapid changes in technology and he wanted to upgrade images. So, in terms of documentary production and, and exhibits, what looked fine in standard definition no longer looks as good in 1080 or 55 inch screen and looks very out of place when seen in 4K, Matt told Ancient Origins. And I'm sure that that's the effect. I mean, just like old video games and EGA and its little cubic type stuff going around. And sure, we've got Roblox and stuff nowadays and Minecraft. But, uh, you know, we're looking for something that has so much picklature and so much, you know, octagon shape going around it. And these, uh, uh, you know, 3D mapping and all these things that we do. We want it to be real. In fact, we can tell whenever it's not good 3D mapping. So what he's saying is it's one of those things where you have to step back away from it. They put it on a big screen and uh, it looks like crap. We have to get back 20, 30 foot from it and that's kind of not the idea. And you want to get a better, more accurate representation. I can understand that. According to the My Colorful Pass website, its solutions can overcome these problems and ensure that ever-changing digital formats do not lead to image obsolescence. So in other words, uh, as they run it through here, they can take an image that's 460 kind of and take it all the way up to 1080 DP or whatever off of it. And they'll be able to do that again and again and again by upgrading the software to upgrade the pictures again. So here again is the picture of SETI. You can tell he's a drastic Caucasian here. I don't know, he's probably about... Yeah, that's about right. But I haven't gotten any sun and haven't been in Egypt lately. But um, one thing to note about this is that he is one of the best kept. You can see it in his lips and things like that. But their nose, I mean, at this point here, they're taking an, an object like this and running it up their nose and breaking it in the skull back in there and then taking their brain and wishing it out and have it bring it out the nose. So all their noses are ruined. And this one is still fairly good. But to try to recreate this right, I'm sure it had some type of bulbous effect on the end of the nose. And it looks like this slit in between. I forget the name for that. But uh, that looks like it's been damaged and, and stuff quite a bit too. Here, when I move that out of the way, you can kind of see it. And then this little niche that's out of here. But, uh, yeah, he's one of the better ones and stuff. And different ones, you know, uh, the one through you and you, yeah, that's the one that looks like Abraham Lincoln somewhat. And then Ramsey's has this hook nose that kind of looks like that too. And I guess because they're related, you could see that work through time. AI to reconstruct the ancient faces. Matt told Ancient Origins that I was convinced that there was a way to travel further back in time than photography's advent. During the interview with Ancient Origins, he stated that he saw life and death masks as a conduit to other centuries. These were mainly people who lived and died before photography was invented. He was not happy with the technology available and he developed his own program with an AI framework. In this way he was able to both colorize and restore and therefore or thereby he can create an astonishing reconstruction of those who died hundreds even thousands of years ago. His first foray in this area was the remarkable reconstruction of the face of King Henry VIII or VII, sorry the founder of the Tudor dynasties that we're all know and are famous for. And so here we can see the death mask that was given for Henry VII and the effect that he's putting onto it and then how it becomes more real and then enlarged a little bit so you can see that comparison. But you can take something like a death mask and actually have a real eyeball on it now, real hair, real you know you know effectively turns him back into real i'm sure they're going to do a napoleon and all these death death masks and so on as it comes online but he kind of wanted to step back even further than that matt told ancient origins that the majority of us have a tremendous disconnect from modern and ancient history albeit we are fascinated by it but we have indirectly become accustomed to repetitive and tired imagery this his solutions can create realistic new imagery that can help people to connect with their past this is because according to my colorful past website the service is bridging a gap between history and art and so taking a look at those amazing caucasian egyptians here 
because of the successful reconstruction of King Henry VII and Mary Queen of Scots and others, Matt told Ancient Origins that he felt confident to trace back further and concentrate on royal mummies. He was able to use the photographs of unwrapped mummies of pharaohs. My Colorful Past has recently recreated the face of Pharaoh Seti, who has been dead 3,000 years, despite the technical challenge. The technology has helped us to recreate the face of Seti, who reigned from Egypt from 1294 to 1270 BC. He was the second king of the 19th dynasty of one of the most important of all the Egyptian rulers. Seti was a great builder, and many of his monuments can be seen, such as the ruined temple at Abydos. He was a great general, and his armies campaigned extensively in Western Asia, and he even conquered parts of what is now northern Syria. He also uh, kicked a Nubian uprising down, too, and there's got a video about that from before, but... Uh, We'll take a look at this here in a minute here as we go on. Where are we at? 11 minutes? Fantastic. So, here's another depiction. And can you tell who that's trying to recreate somewhat? Let me zoom out just a little. Yeah, it's all covered with tar. And sealed in the eyes and everything, but... Yeah, nose has been debridged and broken to try to dig his brains out of his nose. That little buck teeth give you any hint? This is King Tut, and he's recreating it also. wonder what color of eyes he's going to end up putting him in, recent, in eventually. wonder if he's going to feel like he has to worry about offending people. The bringing to life of the 3,345-year-old 3, face of Tutankhamun. But a lot of these he's showing not quite finished, isn't he? Yeah, he's showing them not quite finished at this point. It's going to be an unveiling situation. The reign of Seti is considered to be a golden age of art, culture, and Egypt. However, this pharaoh was very cruel, and according to the Bible, a prophecy told that someone would be born who would take his throne. And his, this prompted him to order the death of all male infants. This led to the mother of Moses placing him in a rush basket in the Nile River. He was later found by an Egyptian princess who brought him up as her own child in the palace of the Pharaoh. And we have found, and I've shown in quite a few videos, that that is a story taken from Sargon the Great. And that it wasn't even that they were scared of this other thing or whatever. It's that uh, she was a concubine, his mother... And so their children weren't supposed to end up being the king. And instead of him being killed to ensure that fact that there's no issues, she sent him down in a basket full of bitumen and rush. Now also there's a few other times in history where there are other kings that worried that someone was going to take their throne or their own children and kill them. You can see this in the Greek story where the god keeps eating his own children until Zeus, da da da, you know, type situation. So this is the same type concept. Although in that one, it's a giant, and he's eating these little people, and she gives him a rock, and he eats it. I mean, like, it's 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 hard to understand what they're really trying to even give off there. But in reality, this idea of having a someone's going to take your throne is kind of a foolish one that's portrayed for. You know you're going to have, your kids are going to do that, right? And if you want to talk about when that was really going to happen, and a weird thing when that was going to happen, it would have been not him, but his son. For Ramses, the great, is the one that lived up into his 90s. And his children were so old, once they got the throne, they just kept it for six years and went to his brother and to someone and someone and went to the next. It went that effect. Almost could have skipped it and went with their grandkids, but that would have been a little too young, i.e. kind of a King Tut situation, and someone's have to father over it in between. Whenever they did so, they went through basically a lot of Ramsey's direct descendants to help keep that dynasty going. But a lot of people don't look at it that way. Moses led the Hebrews out of Egypt. Seti I was, the later, was later buried in the valley. Um, oh, wow, this is 
they couldn't have put that sentence right before that video. Moses led the later Hebrews out of Egypt. Um, people, the only thing that this corresponds to is the Hyksos rule, and it was back in the 15th dynasty, and they separated and left. And the Bible itself doesn't even say they crossed through the Red Sea in some magic parting. It says the Sea of Reeds, and yet floods in and stuff, but they were able to make it through, but in the process of them making it through, it was not passable after that point. Their chariots got stuck, blah, blah, blah. Problem is, there's no Pharaoh that got killed in doing all these things, but there is Minkari, who was the first one who tried to kill off the Hyksos and Avaris, and he got his ass killed, and you can see his mummy, he's got these hatchet marks into him. And so they're trying to relate that to this, and in our current way, people have this whole different view of it that's not the way that it even went down. And they've kind of changed it. And, uh, you know, Egypt was kind of embarrassed about any losses they had or any problems. So it's not so much mentioned as being an exodus out of there, but they rent them off type situation. But if you look at it, that's the only reason they existed during that time and would have been taken over by other people, such as the Assyrians and so on, that had chariots. And so basically them coming in and being co-rulers for the few hundred years they were there allowed them to have more advanced weapons and metallurgy all kinds of things, the recurved bow and the chariots, which led to their second half of what we know as Egypt, my well, world, the third, the last third of what we know as Egypt to prosper all the way into the point of the Ptolemaic dynasties and the Greeks and so on. Seti I was later buried in the Valley of the Kings and his tomb was uncovered in 1817. His son was Ramses the Great and many of his descendants became rulers of the lands of Egypt. My colorful past clients include the university sector, museums, libraries, uh, major media outlets such as 21st Century Fox and the BBC have also utilized his technology. At present, Matt is collaborating with a vesting museum in Netherlands and an upcoming ex exhibition on the Napoleonic War veterans. Ah, and will probably do Napoleon and so on. The reconstruction of the face of SETI could be used for educational purposes or as part of the public display. It can help viewers to also have a personal affinity with the ancient Egyptian ruler, those amazing Caucasians. And uh, I could go to showing you pictures of pre-dynastic, blonde-haired, Caucasian Egyptians like Ginger, which they still have a mummy of, in the uh, British Museum. But he was a natural gun mummy, actually desiccated in the sand, which dehydrated him way before they even started doing any type of embalming mummification that we would think of today. But then the earliest dynasties just look up blue-eyed Egyptians and it'll show you all these crystal blue-eyed Egyptian statues from the earliest of dynasty and scribes and things like that. And it's really an oo part how they made these eyes look so real and would counter set them to where there was a space behind them so it looked like a real eye kind of following you around the room. Though they didn't have statuary that was incredible like the Greeks showing movement and stuff, even at that earliest time they had that. If you could have put that stuff together, you know, it's something we still haven't really done today with these glass eyes and these things. We don't do that really to sculptures. We really try to recreate Greek sculptures. The problem with that is most of those Greek sculptures actually used to be painted. Yeah, they found paint on them and everything, and even like blue eyes, they found Egyptian blue. You can take a black light effectively, actinic light, like what lights up coral reefs. It's a funny deep purple blue. And run it over it and show this Egyptian blue shows up and phosphoresces. And uh, it's one of its properties. So let's look at this Temple of Seti here just a little bit and see if we can watch some of it. You can see this advanced form colonnade that's here. And in the earliest dynasties, they had some that were built very much like this and not so round pillared and everything. And it almost looks modern. And uh, I've shown a couple of places where it's got that effect. It's not going to lock up on me, is it? It's trying to. 
<clears throat> so it's pretty much ruined. And what you can tell now is that they really didn't do that artwork there into the stone itself, but they were doing it into plaster. So there is a column inside of that, but it's all plastered over, and then they carved into the plaster, which not near as hard. Here's something famous that everybody looks at. This is the, wow, it's going to catch it odd like that, huh? And people have said a lot about that. Uh, this is the carving that Ancient Aliens always talks about. Let me try to flash back to it real quick here and see if I can get it to do it. And so I see what everybody's talking about. And so this thing is some little land speeder with a guy that's in it. Please quit putting stuff in front of me. Won't go away. I've hit the button four times now on the X. Won't go away. Can't go away. I see what people are saying, but in reality, I think this, you know, it's, yeah, it looks like a helicopter a little bit. I see a cruise ship, you know, type thing. I see a Jetsons type craft, but it's hollow in the inside of it. I see this guy, the little shuttle craft with a guy that's inside of it. Sure, sure. I can see all kinds of things. I can see things in clouds too, and I'm, you know, it definitely is in that box that's up on the shelf that we talk about on possibilities of aliens having been around. Got to be more representation to that. Even if they said don't ever talk about us or show anything, there's got to be more evidence than what we see. I'm just going to leave it there, but. So here's the pillared or collimated halls. Showing scribes and the gods pouring the water around him symbolically. This is all like in the Book of the Dead scenes. A oh, little bird was living in there and flew up. His tomb itself is a whole lot nicer than this. We probably ought to go look at that. Y'all in agreeance? Good. So let's uh, try to step back here. Wow. When it goes into this mode, it does a full delay. So the impressive tomb of Pharaoh Seti I to be reborn in 3D. Let's take a look at that. Where are we at? 23 minutes? Go, go, go. So here's the ceiling here, and it's got the star chart things on it, and this is like the first and second day leading to the third and so on, or I'm sorry, hour of the duat, effectively. And uh, you can see red ochre males and these pale females that are all over here. It's a symbology you can find in Greek art and Minoans, Etruscan, Mitanni, all the people around from then. <coughs> Using actual red ochre art goes all the way back to cave art, which we're familiar with from the, you know, Cro-Magnon and so on. So it all works together. The impressive tomb of Pharaoh Seti to be reborn in 3D. Now I'm not going to read all this out to you here, but I'll just give you an overview. Seti I, son of Ramses I, was the chief of the archers and a vizier. So his father's name was named Ramses also, right? Rams like Ares. But before being a soldier and a pharaoh, he was a priest of Set, linked with Horus, the god of weapons, war, and army. And again, I tell you the Sethites, it looks like they were all redheads that somehow if you were a redhead then you would be under the god Seth for the uh, ancient Acropolis out there has been separated into brunettes and dark haired people over here, blondes over here and redheads over here. Doesn't look like it's by families in any way shape or form. Looks like it's just grouped up in hair color which might be strange. You might say Horace is blonde haired and these are red you know and who's to who to who with 
Watt, and then all the dark-haired people, which is more common. But uh, during his rule, 1305 to 1289, said he advanced the extraction of gold from the mines, worried over a need to recover lost territories in Asia, and had to deal with a rebellion in Nubia, which he quickly suppressed. And yeah, in the other video I've got where it talks about it, he basically acts like he didn't even lose a man in the situation. He just went down and just whooped their ass and burnt their fields and did everything else to them because he had set them up anyhow and they started throwing a fit. So that's what he did. He's been considered one of the greatest pharaohs in Egyptian history. However, Seti is often outshined by the enormous fame of his son and successor, Ramses II or Ramses the Great. Uh, Seti's tomb is in KV-17 of the Egyptian Valley of Kings. It was found in 1817 by the archaeologist Giovanni Battista Belzoni and is one of the most beautiful and complete tombs, the famous necropolis. In fact, the longest and deepest tomb, not only in the Valley of the Kings, but in the Theban necropolis, uh, necropolis and even all over Egypt. So it's the largest tomb. In fact, there are passages in there, which I showed in the last video I did about this last year, that they haven't even opened up. And even whenever they went all the way down there with a reporter, one of the helpers goes down into a passage and comes back out of it. And he tells them that no one's ever been down there. Would you like to look? And da da da. And they don't. He starts talking about other stuff, but that one dude, no one's ever been down there while he's saying that, that guy comes walking back. So somebody's already been there. He's is he trying to say no archaeologists have already been because I'm telling you one thing, they've already been down there a whole bunch. Yeah, the, the people that have cleaned it out and looked at it and done everything else. In fact, they're always taking a look over everything before they let archaeologists loose on it now pretty much. And so that kind of shows you a little directive they got going. So here's his mummy here, and you can tell by looking at him that he uh, has a real good face, and his hands are big and everything, but he's pretty much emaciated, doesn't have much anymore, but looks like Superman wearing a cape there, mummified. Dun, 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 Seti the first. The tomb is so complex is that intact, that the tomb's so complex that its exact length is uncertain. That was hard to get out. Although it's assumed that it may be double the size of the current known portion, nonetheless, after three years of study, a team has managed to digitize part of the tomb that the experts been able to bring to light so far. Now, they started doing a redo on it and trying to um, preserve it. And so whenever they did that, it's right whenever he was going to do his thing. And, like, they couldn't coordinate. So he went and did King Tut's, and that's what they talk about here. And so he did King Tut's tomb and the walls of it. And, in fact, whenever they did that and it got that LiDAR scan of the wall, it's what showed that there was that extra little hole in the wall that they could probably poke through, and then now they've done second scanning and so on like that because it showed there was this little square section that was out of it. Hey, CFAP's video got stuck on here showing it. Surely it's not him talking. They don't want anything like that, or they replaced it with music. We'll see. So um, this that they're doing here with this guy is they're photo representing it in 3D and having cutting it out in basically like a foam board type of situation and then it can be photo printed exactly to color and all that at the same time and you can end up in New York having the tomb of SETI. It'll look just like it. It'll look good enough for archaeologists to check into. Sure, you might want to check the real one out eventually if you're going to do your doctorate on it. But other than that, it would be an incredible way for people to be able to go to Egypt, having not quite gone to Egypt. So here's another picture of part of it in the hallway, and it's faded, losing its color, and plaster's falling off of it quite a bit. And so he's supposed to be making replicas of the tombs here. And... Uh, Finally, it's interesting to note that it was precisely the accuracy of the facsimile of the Boy King's tomb which allowed the British Egyptologist Nicholas Reeves to distinguish slits in the walls and announce his hypothesis about the possible presence of the chamber of the Queen Nefertiti in 
Tutankhamun's tomb, which I just talked about here. And uh, the opening photograph is one of the chamber walls of the sarcophagus of Seti, where you can see the hieroglyphs regarding the second hour of the Book of Amoduat. Yep, second hour. Well, first and second hour, isn't it? And uh, the sky and its constellations. Yep, Orion's in there and things too. But uh, let's see what CFAP's got going with it here, because he always does a, a zoom in that's pretty cool, huh? Come on and show it. Come do a little Google Earth. So this is where we're talking, the Valley of Kings, and it runs in a trench right up through here. There's looking back on the entrance that you come in at in the Valley of Kings itself, but here you can actually go down and look at it from certain points of view they've done this from. And so you can see the tour buses have showed up in the morning time and got those groups there. And there's hundreds of people checking out the individualized tombs. You have to get permits for each ones and certain ones, and you can get double permits and so on to go for them. And kind of expensive, really, but then again, what you're going to do, right? Here's the tomb of Ramses III. And so you can see red ochre males and pale females right here. And that's that same iconography that's been shown for the man does all the work and gets tan, and he can keep his female woman pale she's inside she's not having to toil and work they've got civilization so advanced they don't have to worry about that anymore and no longer will she be that but she'll be fair like you see right here as compared to male depictions that they usually show but priests are still showed to be pale also because they don't do any work perhaps it's shown to kind of egg at the priest a little bit but it's not that they don't do any work they don't do any manual labor they weren't the guys building the pyramids. The scribes, they were actually figuring it all out. They were the architects. Now you can see the pinkish skin of the lady here on the wall where she's going to that. So Ceiling covered with stars. That neat. You can make out her pink arm there, holding hands into the afterlife. This is all just a, a great tomb and of wishes and things, you know. People don't do things like this nowadays, but even great kings don't do things so much like this, and they sure don't put it on the walls, but they wanted it written in stone forever their love for their wife and togetherness and make it into the afterlife the whole book of the dead or coming forth by day is pretty much shown here on the walls in its entirety in its pieces in fact it basically says that he does it and he made it through and so they've got this cheat sheet built on the wall it's going to make it happen still colorful in quite a few places this tomb's kind of weird, and the background of it is not the white, palish color, but it's all done in yellow. So after they did the white, they painted it all in yellow, then they repainted over it. Well, it looks like they painted it afterwards and left some out and painted them with different colors. In fact, looking at that green back there, it looks like they painted the whole thing yellow no matter what was on it, and then added color to some places. So that's pretty neat. We got any time left? Yeah, we got 35 minutes. So let's look at something here. Let's go back and take a look at Seti's grandparents, perhaps. So, uh, I don't know where it is, guys. I've got 40 things open to show y'all. But, mm, let's see it this way. Got one on King Menes coming up. Egyptian Lost Labyrinth. Egyptian Blue Pigment. 3,000 year old Egyptian sarcophagus all these ones I've got going here but uh, what I'm trying to find you is just to take a look at 
his great 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 granddad for this will be you you're coming up and uh, he's been done pretty good too I wonder if they'll actually redo him seriously you're not gonna it had to be this way it couldn't have been just to the left could it I think it's right here look at all these things I've got pulled up to show y'all uh, well let's see here's his wife which is Yuya, there's Thuya and Yuya she's blonde haired as you can see but uh, let's find the male counterpart to that too for it's right up here Uh oh, oh, seriously, look at all these things I got open, oh, okay, so we're looking at different things here, let's look at these crystal eyes to the Egyptian statues that I was talking about earlier, the earliest of dynasties have them, it looks real, so you can tell these blue-eyed Caucasian Egyptians, this is in the fifth dynasty too, so they have them all the way from the earliest dynasties all the way up to about the twelfth, and it kind of ends Although Nefertiti has one blue eye still left in her statue. So that, uh, the one that's real famous that everybody likes. So, uh, still not one of the wanted to show you. I wanted to show you Yuya. And Thuya. And I only showed you his wife. There he is. What do you make of King Tut's great grandmother and grandfather having blonde hair? And so here's the one that, in certain aspects, looks a little like uh, Abraham Lincoln to a lot of people. And he even still has blonde hair stubble on him and stuff. Bright, blonde, curly hair. And they've checked on the natron process, and natron doesn't change hair one bit. They even now have left some in for a long time, like, whoops, we screwed up which they never did in these funerals. There was exacting ways of doing it. Still didn't happen. Did it to all kinds of people's hair. No change, not even one shade. But you can see that he's been darkened, basically, and this darkening effect that's on him is because he's been turned to beef jerky, and bright pink meat turns into dark beef jerky. You look at beef jerky, it's mahogany, effectively. And then they shellacked him with that uh, tar that actually contains some pine saps from Europe. And, uh, hmm, yep, so uh, there he is, that's Thuya, and there's a CAT scan of Yuya, his wife, and her hair, there's another picture of her, and she has that slight overbite too that looks just like King Tut's did, so, kind of telling, isn't it? Anyhow, guys, we'll get on to the next one here, but uh, I like to see him do it to this photograph and see what he would get out of it and what he looks like wouldn't you I think it'd be quite interesting peace